What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you a video on the World Premier Archetype Security Force, otherwise known as S-Force. This archetype is debuting in Blazing Vortex, the set following Phantom Rage. So we're not gonna get this in the TCG for quite some time, but I wanna go ahead and bring you guys a video on that today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. We're over here on Wide Organization, just so we can go ahead and read off some of these new cards and show off some of the artwork. So first up is Security Force Rappa Chiyomaru. So let's go ahead and look at the picture here. This is the uh, Chiyomaru right here. Pretty cool artwork. Let's go ahead and see what this card in fact does. So it is a level two dark warrior effect monster. Great uh, typing and attribute. That's a good start. 800 attack and 1000 defense. You can only use this card's second effect once per turn. First effect monsters your opponent controls that face security force monsters you control can only target monsters in their columns for attack. So Security Force actually implement a new mechanic of sorts where it actually deals with cards that are directly across from a card that shares a column with it. And you can even see right here, they're talking about this in the live stream where they debuted some of these cards. So right here, here's a Security Force card and here's an opponent's card. So there's gonna be a lot of effects that base the column placement and require the Security Force to be directly across from an opponent's monster, or you can actually make it so that you can put it like in the extra monster zone and kind of force them to use those zones. We'll talk about that though a little bit later on. The second effect is a quick effect. You can banish one security force card from your hand, return this card to your hand, and if you do, special summon one security force monster from your deck in defense position, except another copy of itself. So this is kind of cool. The biggest drawback here is that you have to not only banish a card from your hand, but you have to bounce the Chiyomaru back to your hand. So you're kind of taking a minus one. I guess you get the resource back, so it's not the worst, but if your opponent negates it, then, oh, that's not really going to be looking too good, but it's a way for you to special summon any of your security force monsters to the field. It is a quick effect, so you can do it during your opponent's turn if the Chiyomaru gets threatened, so that's really cool. Let's go ahead and see what else this archetype has to offer. Next up is security force Professor Digamma, so this is the artwork for him. Uh, this archetype is like a cross of, like, psi frames and, like, time thieves, I suppose, and judging by this artwork, uh, yeah, it definitely looks like it. So let's go ahead and read the effect of Degamma. So level three, dark psychic effect monster, thousand attack, 1500 defense. You can only use this one effect once per turn. If this card is normal or special summon, you can target a face up monster your opponent controls, change its battle position. Uh, I mean, I guess you can do that at quick effect speed, thanks to the Chiyomaru being able to summon it, but that's not the greatest. Second effect, the battle position of opponent's monsters that face security force monsters you control cannot be changed except with card effects. So basically, as long as as the monsters your opponent have are in the same column, that's what it means by battle position of opponent's monsters that face security force monsters. So face in this case means directly across from. That means that uh, basically in the instance of the Degamma, your opponent cannot change those battle positions. So I guess it's a neat little trick to prevent you from like getting OTK'd, but again, there's no effect negation here. There's not anything being destroyed. So not the best of cards. We'll see what else we got though. Next up is Security Force Orifice. That's a very interesting name. Um, this definitely looks like a Time Thief, that's for sure, though. Uh, light attribute on this one, so that'll be pretty neat to see. Maybe some chaos potential here. It's a level four light cybers effect monster, 1800 attack, 1000 defense. You can only use the second effect once per turn. Your opponent cannot target monsters they control that face Security Force monsters you control with card effects. The wording on this is a little bit strange because it says your opponent cannot target monsters they control that face security monsters you control with card effects. So I don't think this is giving the security force monsters the targeting protection. It's like preventing the opponent's monsters from being targeted by the opponent? That's a bit of a weird effect, if that's the case. The second effect, though, when your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, quick effect, you can banish one security force card from your hand, destroy that monster. So this is actually pretty good. So just a simple example here, if your opponent drops a Halky Fibrax, then you can easily just in response when your opponent activates a monster effect, which Halky Fibrax activates on summon, you chain this, banish the security force card from your hand, and destroy the 
Palki Fibrax, yeah, they still get the summon, it doesn't negate the effect, but you are denying them from doing any further link climbing, and it definitely will uh, put a wrench in their plans for sure. So, not bad. Again, you do have to banish a security force card from your hand, though, so that's kind of rough. Maybe there's a way to easily do that, or uh, at least just recur the resources. Next up is Security Force Gravitino, so that is this one right here. Uh, pretty cool art. It definitely does look like Psy Frames, that's for sure. So, this is a level 5 light psychic effect monster, 2,000 attack, 1,400 defense. You can only use the first effect once per turn. If it's normal or special summon, you can add one Security Force card from your deck to your hand, except another copy of itself. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I mean, if you have the Chiyomaru, that can easily bring it out. You do lose some advantage to do that, but this effectively replaces it, so I think you break even if that's what you do. It can also be tutored from the deck with Chiyomaru, so you pretty much are able to get to this and then break even on advantage. Second effect, banish any monster your opponent controls that faces a security force monster you control when it leaves the field. That's actually a very powerful effect. So if I'm understanding this correctly, anytime a monster would leave the field that is directly across from a security force monster, and that includes Gravitino on top of it, that monster will get banished. The reason why that's so good is because, let's say you're gonna put this across from your opponent's extra monster zone, or you have Gravitino and a second security force monster blocking both of the opponent's extra monster zones. If they wanna try to go into any sort of link monster, if that monster leaves the field, it immediately gets banished. Now, depending on the metagame, that can actually be very good because for any graveyard reliant deck that wants to get its resources back to maybe continue link climbing or anything like that, you basically have like a pseudo kind of dimensional fissure type effect here. And I think that's pretty cool. It's all dependent on how easily you can get these monsters onto the field to start clogging your opponent's zones. So that's what's a little bit tricky here. But uh, I think that's a very, very deceptively powerful powerful effect, and that might be one of the reasons to play this archetype, depending on the other support that this archetype has. Next up is Security Force Pla equals Tina. That's a very interesting name, but uh, cool artwork. I really love the purple. That's really nice. Now let's go ahead and see what this one does. It's a level six dark spellcaster effect monster, 2200 attack, 2000 defense. You can only use this card's first effect once per turn. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one of your banished security force monsters, except security force Pla equals Tina, special summon it. Okay, so now here is a payoff for banishing some of those security force cards, because now with this, you could go like Chiyomaru bring this out and then this can then bring back whatever you banished off of the Chiyomaru effect so there actually is some purpose to banishing these monsters in the first place second effects monsters your opponent controls that face security force monsters you control lose 600 attack uh that's like not really that big of a deal like yeah that can like kind of matter but the first effect is where this card matters the most it's definitely a very decent extender uh again I wish it did a little bit more this card can't special summon itself so you have to get it out with specifically the Chiyomaru or like just I mean tributing it I guess because there's not really many other ways to like special summon some of these maybe when we get to some of the other cards there will be but let's go ahead and see so next up is the link monster this is security force justify that's a very fitting name so it is a link three light cybers link effect monster 2600 attack link arrows top left top and top right it requires three effect monsters including a security force monster so that's already a bit steep you can't even just use two plus monsters it has to specifically be three you cannot summon or set monsters to a zone this card points to you can only use this card's first effect once per turn quick effect you can target one effect monster your opponent controls negate its effects until the end of this turn then you can move that monster to an opponent's monster zone this card points to at the start of the damage step, if this card attacks, you can banish all monsters that this card points to. Okay, so here's like a little bit, I don't wanna call it a win condition, but it's at least something to kind of aim for in terms of the link spamming here. So effectively, if you can get this monster onto the field, then if your opponent were to activate an effect, you can negate it, and then you can move that monster to a different zone that this card points to. And then if this card were to attack, you can banish everything that this card would be pointing towards. Now, one of the weird things about this is the fact that you're giving your opponent a bunch of link zones. That doesn't really matter as much, you know, especially now with how easy it is to go into link summoning plays, but that still isn't the best. You can still negate the effects of things. For a link three, just to have one effect negation, 
it's a little bit steep, you know what I mean? So let's go ahead and see what else though. It's not like terrible, but I don't think it's like super, super powerful. Next up is Security Force Bridgehead. Here is the field spell here. Pretty cool artwork on that. So it is a field spell. You can only activate one of its uh, name per turn. You can only use the second effect once per turn. When this card is activated, you can add one Security Force monster from your deck to your hand. Okay, well, it's a field spell that automatically pluses you on advantage. That's very, very good. These are some of the best field spells ever. Second effect, remember this is once per turn. When an opponent's monster declares an attack on your Security Force monster in the same column, you can activate this effect that monster you control cannot be destroyed by battle again this this like battle protection these attack reduction effects these aren't like particularly strong these are only going to really matter if you're like really really low on life points and you're trying to mitigate damage i mean you're going to play three of this just because it searches your whole deck but you don't really care about that second effect unless you know it really matters and your opponent can kind of play around it pretty easily depending on the circumstances you're really playing this just for the searcher next up is security force showdown this looks like a quick Play spell pretty cool artwork there so it is a quick play spell you can only activate it once per turn you can activate one of these effects you can either special summon one security force monster from your hand in defense position okay so that is a way to get these monsters onto the field that is very important this deck was lacking that significantly so now it's cool to know that you don't have to rely solely on chidomaru to be able to get these monsters onto the field secondly you can target a security force monster in your graveyard add it to your hand i wish it just special summoned like i wish it didn't have to just add it to your hand granted it kind of works in tandem with one another if you, if you draw multiple of these you can like use one add something to your hand and then activate the other on your next turn summon what you added back to the field so like that's kind of cool this allows you to get more of these security force monsters on the field what i also like about this is that this allows you to kind of mess with your opponent in a way because you can use this in like response to something since it's a quick play drop something into a column so that way it's facing across from that monster and then you get whatever applicable effect in that instance so that's that's pretty cool. You have a little bit of a surprise factor there, but let's go ahead and look at the last card here, which is Security Force Specimen. So this is a trap card, and if I didn't know that this was a Security Force card, I would say that this was a Cyframe card 100%. So, a uh, normal trap, you can only use either the first or second effects once per turn and only once that turn. If your opponent controls a monster, you can target one of your Security Force monsters that is banished or in your graveyard. Special summon it to your field so that it faces a monster your opponent controls. Okay, so this is another way to get those monsters onto the field i was really hoping showdown did this but the trap card does it um it also allows you to do this with banished monsters as well so since you're going to be banishing a lot of cards with those initial effects that's really nice for allowing setup it's also very thematic because you have to put it across from one of your opponent's monsters so that way you get whatever incidental synergy that the security force monster provides so that's pretty good i don't think you needed to kind of make it that narrow you could have just made it that you could summon it anywhere but i mean i guess it it makes sense with the theme. The second effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target a security force monster you control. Move it to another of your main monster zone. So this is kind of cool when you go back in tandem with, uh, which one is it? I believe it was the Gravitino, because if you use this, and then let's say your opponent starts using like the extra monster zone that's not being across from a security force, you can banish the trap and then like move Gravitino to that zone. So then if they're to link off that monster, that gets banished instead. So they give you these tools to be able to kind of manipulate the field and uh, play a little bit of chess with your cards in a way to ensure that stuff like Gravitino can always be active. But overall, I feel like the archetype is definitely lacking. I think the cards are kind of neat and they do some cool things, but they definitely feel too fair. Like it doesn't feel like there's anything like ridiculously overpowered about this archetype. Like it does some pretty neat things, but I think this is just the first wave of support. And who knows, maybe there's just some absurd boss monster that lets you just dump a bunch of these onto the field. There's like incidental psychic synergy and stuff here as well. They're also chaos attributed, which is interesting. So you could, if you wanted to play certain cards like chaos dragon levy to like really give 
give this deck a boost in terms of power so that way when all these cards are like getting into the graveyard then you can just like drop a levy in here and kind of just have that be your finisher there is some things you can do with that but one problem with that is that a lot of these cards like banish themselves or like banish like other cards so it's not as easy to fill the graveyard as you might think and at that point if you're going to play a chaos deck you might as well just play you know any other deck that can facilitate chaos monsters rather easily you know look to decks like dragon link and the like i think it's okay it's got a pretty decent first wave of support who knows in the set after blazing vortex if they'll get their more broken cards we've seen that in the past with like some sets where the second archetype wave of support will just be insane so who knows we'll just have to see but definitely one to keep your eye on i think that's for sure but guys that's gonna wrap it up for the video let me know down in the comments what you guys think about the security force archetype i'd really love to hear your thoughts thank you guys so much for watching the video be sure to like the video as always subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content and if you found this video informative consider supporting me on patreon or becoming a youtube channel member just by showing your support in any way that you can you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content so thanks so much again and we'll see you next time One, two, three,